Call it February 12th. It's got a commission meeting to order. Would you please stand for the flag salute? <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Approval agenda. We have a couple of the items to be, <coughs> excuse me, uh, to add to our agenda. Consider approval of multi hazardous mitigation plan and review, and consider approval of the bid for the 650 1900 Avenue Ridge replacement. I'll move to make that official. Your second. I'll second. And move to the second. Any other discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, motion carried. Consent agenda. Uh, minutes of the February 5th meeting. And the approval of the regular work session and the regular meeting and payroll of $247,399.66. And abatements of $1,440.50. And wire payments. Of thirty-nine thousand four hundred and thirty-four dollars and sixty-six cents. I'll make the motion, motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. It's been moved in the second. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Commissioner comments and reports. Uh, Laverne, you want to go first? Yeah, we we all uh, last Monday went down to Harrington and and uh, went to the. Uh, Harrington Chamber of Commerce meeting, and uh, they had had a good turnout of people there, and I guess I was impressed. Uh, the chamber seems to be very active in, in getting uh, more people uh, belonging to the chamber. I don't think I can compete with that. So let's crack that down. <laughs> and. Anyway, they they are getting some more businesses coming in in the Harrington, which is is always good to hear. So enjoy that meeting. I guess that's it. Lynn, I also attended the Harrington Chamber banquet, and um, they did have two businesses that are going to be opening up: two restaurants, Panda Kitchen. Um, which has a restaurant here in Abilene and Heston uh, are putting in a real nice facility and they have a Subway sandwich place going in. So it is um, always good on a chamber bank that you hear, you know, some of the business community saying some of the good things that are happening. And, um, and so anyway, those were kind of some encouraging words to hear. And I also attended over at Salina at their chamber banquet last week. and. Um, they've just put on a, a, a really good banquet, and they have some challenges that they're working on over there. And, um, it seemed like a very successful meeting. I was able to attend the Fort Riley listening tour that they had this uh, past week. It was just tremendous, the outpouring of support and the number of people that were showing up, not just from Junction City and the fort, but the uh, surrounding communities. And looking out at the crowd, I, you know, saw some people from uh, familiar faces from Abilene and uh, Chapman, and and um, so it was good to see that kind of support. It packed out the building. There were 1,200 some people. They had a tent set up outside. They had um, people outside because there just wasn't room to get everybody inside. Um, but they had it well orchestrated and had a speaking system set up so everybody could hear. And it was just a standing room only crowd. Um, also, it was played live on one of the local radio stations over there at, at Junction City, so that, that really helped get the word out. Um, let's see, this evening is at the conservation dinner? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I had that down to attend, and, um, and I do plan to attend that and uh, look forward to that. And I think that's probably all I have for Well, I, I will mention that uh, Lieutenant Colonel Joey. Arrington was here earlier this morning. Uh, he's the 2nd Armored Brigade Combat Team, and um, or the Dagger Brigade, 
and gave us an overview of some of the outreach and community partnerships that they're working on, um, not just in Dickinson County, but also um, the surrounding <coughs> counties. But we talked about some of the specific things that we could do to strengthen that partnership. And they already have tremendous inroads um, with the schools and the school districts. And um, But, you know, I think there's much more that can be done. So we want to look for ways to, um, you know, foster that relationship. That's it. Uh, we had a department head meeting at the same time. Uh, John Holgram, our uh, health department head, uh, did we have no cases of measles right now in the schools. Uh, not that it hasn't been a problem before. The biggest problem is uh, some of the older adults, the teachers and stuff that haven't been immunized are getting the, the measles and stuff. I did attend the chamber meeting at Harrington. Uh, I went to uh, Don Helwick is uh, retiring as manager over at DSNO. Uh, Tim, well, I don't remember his last name, is the new manager at, uh, at DSNO. And then Wednesday, yesterday afternoon, uh, Brenda and Bauer, and she was on our panel. Uh, Dave Dillner, uh, Phil Weiser. We said about an hour and 15 minutes at the bank office in Chapman had a panel discussion on uh, effective. Local government. So, uh, that's all I have. Next is presentation, proclamations, and other comments. We have a proclamation to declare February as Teen Dating Violence Awareness Month. Proclamation reads. Read it. Whereas females between the ages of 16 and 24 are more vulnerable to intimate partner violence, experience abuse that are higher at a rate almost triple the national average, and whereas one in three adolescent girls in the United States is a victim of physical, emotional, or verbal abuse from a dating party, a figure that exceeds victimization rates for other types of violence affecting youth, and <clears throat> whereas high school students who experience physical violence in a dating relationship are more likely to use drugs, alcohol, are at a greater risk of suicide, are much more likely to carry patterns of abuse into future relationships, and whereas younger people victimized by dating partners are more likely to engage in risky sexual behavior, unhealthy dieting behaviors, and ex the experience may disrupt the normal development of self-esteem, body image, and whereas Nearly half the teens who experienced dating violence report that incidents of abuse took place in a school building or on school grounds, and whereas only 33% of teens who are the, in an abusive relationship ever tell anyone about the abuse, and 81% of parents surveyed either believe teen dating violence is not an issue or admit they do not know anything until it is one and whereas providing young people with educational <coughs> education about healthy relationships and relationship skills and by changing attitudes that support violence, we recognize that dating violence can be prevented and whereas it is essential to raise community awareness and to provide training for teachers, counselors, and school staff so that they may recognize when youth are exhibiting signs of dating violence and Whereas the establishment of Dating Violence Prevention and Awareness Month will benefit young people, their families, schools, communities, regardless of social economic status, gender, sexual orientation, or ethnicity, and whereas anyone has a right to a safe and healthy relationship and to be free of abuse. Now, therefore, the County of Dixon County and the State of Kansas hereby proclaims February 2015 to be designated as Teen Dating Violence Awareness Month and urge our citizens to recognize and assist all those who have served the right and needs of victims of teen dating violence. Motion to approve the proclamation. I move that we approve the proclamation of the Teen Dating Violence Awareness Month. Second. First February. 
been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Yes. Sorry. Yep. No. Um, thank you. I'm Sheila Beeson. I'm a team dating writer. Oh, okay. I should... So thank you. You did an awesome job reading that. <laughs> we just want to, you know, thank you again for the support that you've shown to DVAC to provide the services to the local schools. So um, it's still a program that's growing, and uh, with you know exciting new information out there, I've got some new curriculum. Really excited to present that to the schools too. So. Um, we're in plans of doing a workshop at Abilene to increase the awareness of teen dating violence, which a lot of times is emotional more so than the physical. And the stats that we read today are um, a national, but unfortunately, we're seeing it at all levels of communities, small, large. So um, if we can help prevent that, we talk about bullying too, because that's where it often starts. So um, yeah, we try to make it as comprehensive as we can. So. Yeah. So we appreciate it. Thank well, you. the problem is it usually starts before they ever get yeah, a little. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's me and my daughter's it's in preschool the, class. Yeah, you know, yeah. So it's, well, it's I mean, the violence like, starts between yeah. the, their parents. Yeah, what they see yeah. in the home, and then yeah. they often replicate yeah. it. Yeah. So yeah. we can help prevent it. We often find just in visiting with our clients that a lot of the times the partner that was abusive will find the abuser and then will continue to abuse them. And so it's just that it's the partner that was abusive was raised um, in an abusive home or. Uh, bullied as a youth, you know, and that sort of thing, so often escalates. So I'm finding really great discussions with the kids. They're just amazing. They're eager to learn. I wish I had learned about, you know, healthy relationships when I was in school. We just talked about the birds and bees, and that was it, you know, so. Um, so really excited. Yeah. Big, big things for the future. Now you've been doing this for quite a few years. Two you've years been, now. Okay, this two is our years. second year, okay. so it's still pretty new. I just got back from a conference. Um, it's the first prevention conference put on by the Coalition for the Against Domestic Violence and Sexual Assault, and really excited to see how much we progress in terms of versus Johnson County program and you know Lawrence program. We're really moving faster. We've got a lot of schools signed on to do this, so. and we're hoping to have the program in all ten counties that we serve. So mm -hmm. this one of things. Yeah. You want to name the yeah. counties that you serve? Um, so far, um, Abilene, Ellsworth, and Celine, and then, oh goodness, then we pretty much serve then the rest up to the border, so. <laughs> like down in Marshall. So, yeah, Washington. and we're in the colleges too now, um, working with the teens at Kansas Wesleyan, K-State, um, Cloud County, um, really trying to reach out. I know often time is an issue for the um, schools, and so we're trying to work it in where we can. Clubs. Um, like what used to be home ec, facts, the uh, family and consumer science. science classes, anything we can get into. So they've been really receptive so far. So like at Abilene, we've been working with the Spurs kids, and so the leadership group that they have out there. And then they can help fight bystander um, issues. Because that's why we see a lot of it with bullying and teenage violence. People hear and see things but don't know what to say or who to talk to for help. So we've really been reaching out for that, too, to help prevent that bystander issue that we've got so yeah yeah and your funding mechanism for um, this program it's uh the main one that i have um is jag the justice assistance grant i think it's called and that's bad um and that's uh we're in the second year of funding with that and it's been amazing uh the first year we have verizon grant too and so each year they fund something a little different. So this year they're funding our college program that we've got started this year. So, And then what we're hoping to do is have the college students come talk to the high school students and then eventually have like seniors and juniors do a lot of the presentations with us. So it, it's, yeah, it's going to take maybe another year or so to get to that point, but we're excited. Yeah. How, how do you deal with the, the younger kids that are afraid to say anything, afraid that they might get in worse trouble, I guess, or yeah, a lot how of do times. you deal with, is that self-esteem that you have to build up, or yeah, how does that yeah. work? We have to encourage them to know, because um, a lot of times if somebody has been bullied or in an abusive relationship, their self-esteem has been knocked down, way down, so we try mm -hmm. to build them up, um, look for the good in them, in others. Um, we do a lot of uh, our courses, if we do get to do a course, if we're lucky, um, if not, we do one-time presentations and maybe even come out and talk to the kids again if they have questions. Um, but we often uh, try to build them up, talk about healthy relationships, respect for each other, what that looks like, um, how to be, have compassion, empathetic, you know, that sort of thing. Um, a lot of activities that get up and get them engaged and answer questions and get them thinking about things. 
Um, but for the most part, I've been working with seventh grade and up. So I want to get with the lower kids too, the younger ones. But we often have them talk to somebody they trust, family member, aunt, uncle, um, coach, Boy Scout, Girl Scout leader, anybody really, anybody that they really trust. And we do let the kids know too that at DVAT we're confidential because sometimes they're worried about, hey, if I share this information, am I going to get in trouble for it? Mm -hmm. So at least if they come to us, we can safety plan with them. And we often encourage them to talk to their parents, their school counselor, that sort of um, avenue is what we take because we don't want them to feel like they're all alone. You know, So if we can at least help them with that. We, we appreciate any chance we get, really. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you. Motion. And there's a copy of it. Awesome. Thank you. Great. Thank All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you. Report of County Officer Brad. Okay. <laughs> well, the first item on our left has, the list has to do with TIF funds. We did receive a check from Solomon earlier this week for. Uh, Partial repayment. The check is for 131,000, uh, and then they also included the letter that you have a copy of that provides a five-year payback schedule, as opposed to the three that we had suggested. Which is that going to be a problem or not? It's not going to be a problem for us. I mean, it is. We're getting it back. Yeah, as long as we're giving it back, and they, they made a good effort, and I think that's what they feel like they can afford. And so, I, you know, I'm certainly comfortable with that. Um, at this point, what I would like to have your input on is the, the 136,000 we have. Uh, it would be my recommendation that we pay back the school portion in whole at this point, and then the, what remains is the city pays us back. We pay off what they owe us. And what I base that recommendation on is we have, you know, in this whole thing, we've got we've got some responsibility in the heirs. The city has some responsibility in the heirs. The school district really didn't have any responsibility in this whole thing. And uh, the portion that the school is reimbursable at this point to in to the school is is ninety one thousand eight hundred and ninety nine. And uh, we would pay them, they would be free and clear, then the remainder of this port would go back into our coffers, and then each year as the city pays us back the amount based on that schedule, we would put it back in, in our uh, general fund, and we would have to worry about splitting it out in the future with the school district. If that's if that's amenable to you guys, that's what we'll let Stroke Leah to do, do with it, so. Yeah, I agree that Solomon the School District is not, they weren't in part We're of it. We're kind of the innocent yeah, part. Right. And uh, that coupled with the fact of everything in the media right now, the School District could probably even that money a little bit more than, so. And I, I, I truly say that as a county employee and as a school board member, but I would like to get that part cleaned up because they really didn't have any. Well, it'd be a lot easier for bookkeeping to do it this it way yeah. rather than, you know, trying to divide it out for five years. Yeah, so. There's so with that in that, that's the way I'll, I'll give that to Janelle and have her work with Lee to get that taken care of. But at least we're on the route get to getting it corrected yep. in the future. So. Uh, you also have a notice on the Chisholm Trail planning meeting. Of course, Craig and I will be gone that night, but uh, uh, if you guys decide to attend, we, uh, they had sent that over for us to, yeah. to let everybody know. We've scheduled the annual public building commission meeting for March 5th during your meeting here at 11:15, and we'll I'll send it out to the board members, and we'll make conference call available to them again as normal, just to be able to uh, keep that uh, within the legal realms. Uh, under your paint tab, you have a copy of a data sheet that I compiled for you on Martin's uh, crack ceiling. Bids. We told you uh, late last year that we were, we'd actually, uh, we need to buy a crack setting machine. We don't have one. one. What we do have that's ours, as you're aware of, is very antiquated at best. Uh, we had borrowed one from the city of Abilene. They were very uh, gracious to let us use theirs, and we proved without any doubt that we can time efficiency in the machine as well, well worth the money and investment. Uh, so what Martin has done is he actually made a trip down to Kansas City with with a couple of his guys here a few weeks ago 
to the vendor and looked at a couple of machines down there and various aspects of those. Uh, came back, he put together a request for bid based on the information they had gleaned, and we have obtained two bids from the uh, vendors, or only two vendors, uh, and two, two manufacturers who make machines like this. And uh, the first bid is from Logan Contracting Supply of Olathe uh, for 150-gallon uh, uh, Simline Magma Gen 4 Melter. And it is, uh, the quote on that one was $39,920. The second bid we got was paper, paper maintenance supply in Wichita. And it's essentially the comparable model from Craftco. It is only 100, excuse me, 125 gallon, but that's the, the size that they make. And that bid's $40,019.63. Both of the vendors met specs. Uh, however, uh, the Simline model, and in looking at it, Martin said, uh, you know, informed me that one thing that the guys like about that machine is that the pumping components and the items that will wear and go bad in, in the future are built external to the to the oil tank. So when you have to service it, it's going to be a whole lot easier to service it than having to empty the heat it up, empty the oil tank, and work in all of that. Uh, Built, if you will, to replace those parts. So they just like the design a lot better, besides the fact it's a little bit. So um, it would be our recommendation that uh, that we allow Martin to purchase that that 150 model 150 Magma from Logan Contractors. We do have the money in his uh, equipment reserve fund. We've been putting money back for a couple of years for this purchase, and uh, so it's available. So that's what we would like to do. Think both new machines. They're both brand new machines. Okay, I know the one we were looking at before was... We were looking for a used yeah, one. Right. We just couldn't find anything yeah. that, you know, they're yeah. used, and when they're used, they're, yeah. they're very hard to find because people have used them. So right. They're, they're worth the money. Mm -hmm. And and honestly, the used ones that we were finding weren't in the shape that we want to invest the kind of money, and they were supposed so. to retail uh, what the new machine was, really. So... For five to five to ten thousand dollars more, you get a brand new machine with a warranty, and it doesn't have all the hours on it. So, yes, yeah, these are both new machines. So, yeah, let's see. Now this is down at the bottom. Of the the gym is all gone here. Let's see. Uh, Chancy has provided me <coughs> with a. Uh, a resolution for uh, approving or adopting the multi-hazard mitigation plan for Dickinson County. <coughs> Excuse me, that's your red tab. This is a, a project that Chase has been working on for quite some time with uh, with the state and also the school districts and the, and the cities within Dickinson County. It's a, it's a multi-agency uh, project and they have completed that and it's been adopted in all the communities and all and by all the school districts as well. And it just needs to be formally adopted by us at this point so that it can be sent up to the state uh, and be a part of that project. And I won't go in and read it all, but it uh, basically says that we have adopted that plan and that is our plan for various hazards and uh, emergencies that could exist in Dickinson County. Attempt to answer any questions that I could, if you have any. <clears throat> I assume there's a detailed plan written out. Then that there is a very it's all online now, uh, but it is a very detailed plan. It's uh, that basically addresses all the potential hazards and dangers that uh, Dickinson County, the people of Dickinson County, could expect to be harmed from, and how we would deal with those those hazards and mitigate those. So this is required by the federal government. Mm -hmm. uh, and if without this, we are not eligible for any federal assistance should we have a disaster. So uh, we have to have this particular plan on file or a plan of some type. So
Any other questions? We have Brad. We want. At that point, we do we do need to have that formally approved. So you want to do it now, or you want to do it? If you'd here? like to do it now, that'd be fine. Okay. Uh, we have a motion to approve the hazardous mitigation plan. Multi hazardous multi jurisdiction hazard mitigation plan. I'll second. That was a motion. Yes, mm -hmm. motion. Uh, I'll just read here a little bit at the, the top here uh, for discussion. Adopting the North Central Region F multi hazard multi jurisdiction hazard mitigation plan, whereas Dixon County recognized the threat that natural hazard posed to people and property within our community. Uh, whereas undertaking hazard mitigation action will reduce the potential for harm to people and property future hazards current van and it goes on move, move a second have any other, other discussion if not all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. motion <laughs> carried uh, Craig I was wondering Brad had mentioned giving us um, how we're going to distribute those funds um, to go ahead and have the USD district uh, oh you mean that's all right I wonder if we should formalize that through just a a motion and that way it's on record that uh, that's I think Doug say it doesn't sure. hurt to do it yeah yeah <clears throat> that motion be Linda do that yes I'd so move that we go ahead and and uh, direct the distribution going to the Solomon USD district uh, in its entirety at this time and uh, with the other to be over the next five years paid out as the plan submitted I'll second any other discussion if not all those in favor say aye Aye. 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 Motion carried. Okay, I'm going to jump down just to let you know that the Sheriff's Department had uh, arranged an extradition from Virginia for uh, an inmate uh, to be brought back to Justice here in Dickinson County. They used an extradition company to do that, which was a cost of $1,250 from the Virginia Department of Bar. I'd also included in your packet the notice for the house uh, sale, and the sealed bids, and we'll have that put on our website, as well as uh, we'll have it in the newspaper for the time of us, uh, as soon as they can get it published. But what we'll be doing is selling uh, sealed bids. The sealed bids would be, would be due on March 4th, the end of business. and. Uh, we will make the building of both houses open for inspection on Monday, February 23rd from 4 to 6 p.m. For anyone who wants to look at that. Uh, who's going to have to do that for you since we'll be gone, Brad? Chance he's going to have Seth over there and okay. be there from 4 to 6 o'clock. Okay. He lives across do, the street. Do we need a person in each house? Or no? I don't know. We need somebody in each house, but we do, since they're close enough, but we definitely need somebody there to, to monitor it. So. Uh, good definition of what you know I mean it's pretty I have an understanding of what it is but uh, you know something they could have you know a little handout of this is you know what can be done with it you know how it needs to be demoed and, and stuff like that Brad you know so kind of a handout yeah, for them. I mean you know just to, you know so there's fewer questions have to be asked <coughs> Steph. yeah and I, I allowed for a 30 day window time frame that they would have from the time we potentially award that whatever we have in 30 days unless, yeah. you know, and hypothetically if somebody came in and said, well, we'd like to remove the whole house, it might take us 60 days, I think we'd be able to work with them. Yeah. You know. But so, sure make it a lot cheaper for... Well, we wouldn't have to mess with them. Right. Either, so, but uh, we certainly would want to have a, and as we, as I indicated in this, we'd want to have a liability waiver signed by the successful right. leader before they started anything. So... Well, I guess my concern is having somebody in each house. If something happened, you know, we'd have a person there that seen what happened. You know, if well, we can have somebody there. Right? Well, just I in case somebody there. that one banister is kind of wobbly, and I, mm -hmm. you know, somebody leaned against it, it could break off, and yeah. I think maybe just even have a, a little form made out that relieves us of liability and just say that, you know, they should use caution through the house where, I mean, it's just not turned yeah, loose for someone to, go in, yeah. you know. I, I don't know how big a turnout we're going to get, right. but, you know, if it's only a few people 
probably not a problem, but if if a lot of people want to just come and look, I mean the ceiling is, like you say, is bad in some places. And well, also going back to that too is who's ever there rather than trying to answer a question and give them wrong information. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so, you know, I can't answer that question because if they answer it and it's not correct, then we're really, I mean, they're acting as an agent for the county. So, I mean, rather than trying to answer, I mean, that's what I'm saying is because they're at, you know, they work for the county. If they tell them something, you know, just show them the house. <laughs> Here's the handout. Yeah. If you yeah. have any other questions, questions call yeah, come, yeah, call the county when we get back. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, that wouldn't work that yeah. out. <clears throat> uh, let's see, the last thing that I had was uh, the bid tabulation, the long sheet, which is marked in yellow on your, in your packet. Uh, bids were, uh, the bid that day was uh, Tuesday for the 650-1900 Avenue Bridge project. The, uh, for a change, we've got some good news. Uh, Caw Valley, that is a project Caw Valley is working on for us. Their engineer's estimate for the total project was $587,746. We received four viable bids uh, from contractors on that one, with the low bid being $551,369 from King Construction. The highest bid was just for reference was six hundred ninety-five thousand four hundred twenty dollars. So, uh, Call Valley has uh, reviewed the the bid from King Construction and uh, recommended it as being a viable bid, legitimate bid. So at this point, to move forward, what we would need to do is to issue the uh, notice of award to. King Construction, and I would just need your blessing to do that by receiving, uh, acknowledging their bid price and, and uh, telling us to move forward. So, and just as a reminder, that is a project that is funded by KDOT with the matching funds from us, and that is well, that price, that bid from King is well within the uh, price frame that we were anticipating and having our budget to be able to afford. So. We, we would stand 20% then. Okay, 20%, yeah. You want to yeah, have a motion? Yeah, you, Lauren. Yeah, I move that we approve the bid on the uh, bridge at 650 1900 Avenue to King Construction Company for $551,369.70. Second. It's been moved in the second. Any other discussion? Uh, I'm looking at here. Good alternatives. That does include the polymer, I see. I it's see that good. that's pretty much, you know, the standard. You know, the two. From pretty much M &M. everywhere. That's yeah. a standard deal. Yeah. I think that's really good, a good alternate to have. So. Yeah. No other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Yeah, I think that's real cheap insurance for prolonging the life of the bridge. Absolutely. And like I say, I wish we'd get, down the road and wish we'd we'd get all the bridges done for that price. Yeah, sometime down the road, you know, whether it's 20, 30, 40 years, we'll probably have to go out and put the polymer on again to seal it again. But that's a whole lot cheaper than a new bridge. So. Well, this, looking at two fracture critical bridges we've got that kind of tells you what would if you, what it's going to cost for what we're to replace well, those, yeah, you have to low well, bid. Well, road is, is yeah. another, yeah. you know, what, 20, Three times, to, yeah. 20 to 40 percent longer yeah. than this one, yeah. so it's, mm -hmm. the price and, would be And sometimes when you get bigger, it doesn't even necessarily get cheaper. Yeah, yeah. So John's estimate of three quarters of a million dollars would probably be pretty big right in the ballpark on that one, so if not, yeah. if not low. So. Uh, that's all I've got for right now. Doug, anything you have for us? No, no, thank you. Thank you. Notice and communications. Got a bunch. Set back. <laughs> uh, we all got the, well, I think the invited to the community gathering uh, February 25th uh, for the Chisholm Trails. 
day at, uh, at Civic Center. <clears throat> Barb had to attend that. Okay, yes. Anything? I, yeah. I was yeah, really out of town. So. Uh, I'll check my calendar, but I'll maybe be attending that also. Okay, Barb, you got that? Mm -hmm. uh, the invited to attend the Dixon County Town Hall February 19th, the Thursday at the Eisenhower Museum. It's on the Tim Yule camp. It's going to be in town for a town hall meeting. Anybody going to be attending that? That's February 19th. Be that after our next meeting, we'll be at Thursday. <laughs> I, I possibly will be. And what time was that? Uh, two. Two thirty. Uh, possibly I will too. I mean, I can just be safe, put it on. Yeah. Uh, we got a Kansas Department of Commerce, Business, and Community Development uh, CDBG update. Uh, Water and Sewer Grant Awards. Um, I'm looking here, I didn't look through before. There's, <coughs> but I see there's none in Dixon County. Canton's got one. Dixon Lodge. Uh, downtown Commercial Rehab Program. Maximum grant of $250,000, uh, 25% must come from local funds, uh, changes in CDBG administration certification policies. If anybody wants to look at that, I'll we'll pack it down, Barb, and I want to keep that. Got the Clerk of the District Court monthly report of activities. Uh, county Clerk fees of 400 and I think it's either a one or a seven. $75 and prosecution attorney, $238. Dixon County reimbursement attorney fees, witness fees, copies, $493.12. Diversion fees, zero. Finger printing, bookkeeping fees of $539 for a total of $1,745.12. Uh, we got a permit here from the Kansas Department of Health and Environment for renewal of permit number O. 692 for the city of Abilene uh, for comp composting. We did a letter from the Center School District. Um, there are many members. Century Parents Pride is once again sponsoring an all night party for juniors and seniors for the dates for the after prom party, April 18th. We don't, yep, I didn't think we did. They're out in our district. That's what I, we got our KCCA dues, uh, membership uh, for populations of counties 10,000 to 2,000, no, excuse me, 24, 999, uh, $420. We normally hadn't been given to them. They're not in our county, are they? I'm not sure why they yeah. said those Well, they're close to us. Close. <laughs> Do they have any of the students? There would be work. students from There'd a few students. There would be a few students from Dixon County. Literally Dixon County. County. Yeah. The majority of it's in Lewis and Mary. Got a letter from. Gail Engel, KCCA president, uh, went with the letter for our dues, uh, inviting us to the Thursday, May 5th through the 7th at the Double Tree by Hilton and Wichita <clears throat> for that meeting. Uh, if you want to, we can secure our reservations by calling the Double Tree. We've got to have those if you want to get the, the end, it's got to be by group readers available until April 12th. Uh, after the 21st, they will be accepted on availability at the best rate available time. Uh, I think we're all planning on attending. 
Lynn? Yeah, so that, yes. what was the date again? Uh, 5th through the 7th, that least on the next page, I learned. <coughs> It will interfere with the commission meeting probably because it's yeah. Tuesday to Thursday. Won't be any fairness, there just won't be one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, last two years we've well, it's been on a third the one here Thursday. <clears throat> Got a notice from the H Hills District of a civil case. Uh, you know, plaintiffs with West Star Energy or Gary Willis Burkholder State. Uh, got two of them. So this is Burkholder State. Uh, Kansas Department of Health and Environment. Uh, notice KSQ 15 2, permit number ISH 42 P001. Oh no, P001, uh, wastewater treatment facility. Existing facility for uh, Clarence Dark and Dark Brothers. That's the one that's before. Another Kansas Department of Health and Environment letter, public notice number KSAG 15065. Enclosed public notice regarding Kansas Water Pollution Control permits for agricultural related structures. Uh, would be Gardens again, Center Garden, Garden Brothers. And we also, I think everybody got their NACO newsletter, or paper, and that was in the mail. That being all the public notice and communication. Did you notice uh, Cedric County was often out of Participating in NACO. Central oh, County, yeah, I was on the news last night. News last night. Hmm. Any reason why? Uh, cost. Yeah. Oh. I think their cost course, is. That's probably based on population, isn't it? So their costs are considerably oh, different sure. than our costs. It's, I think I heard it was their membership was around just under 10,000. Mm -hmm. <clears> it was a 3 2 vote. Unfinished business? If not, we have other business. Uh, <laughs> we went through the rebid for the crack zones. We have a motion to approve the bid of 30, what's that paper? 39,000, $920 from Logan Contractor Supply. Also make that motion. I'll second it. Been moved and second. Any other discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. No other business to come before the commission? I accept a motion to adjourn. I move mean, we adjourn. Second it. Motion carried. Aye. Better vote on it. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. <laughs> <laughs>